everybody. I'm Reverend Steve Killam. I am the senior pastor here at St. Paul's United Methodist Church, and we are certainly glad that you are joining us today for our online service. I have a couple of things to go over with you today. You know, it is becoming the fall. I know it, it's, it's hard to believe right now. It's still 100 degrees outside, and it will be until October, but school is back in session. Uh, things are starting to settle down a little bit, and so if, if you're in Lufkin, or if you're just coming through and you wish to join us, uh, we worship at 11 a.m. on Sundays, and we're located at 1505 South John Reddit Drive here in Lufkin, Texas. That's basically the intersection of Hanks and Loop 287. We would certainly be glad if you could join us. Yes, we are the home church for Chip and Tater, the puppets. Hey, that's us. So uh, if, you, if you're if uh, you watching this online and, and you wish to, to give us uh, an offering, uh, you can do so by sending it to P.O. Box 921. It's in Lufkin, Texas, and the zip code there is 75902. Uh, just go ahead and help us out uh, for, for the online service, for the puppets, and for all the various things that we do. We would certainly appreciate anything that, that you would send us. Uh, if you have anything that you would like to uh, say on the, the, the service, if you're watching uh, on uh uh, Facebook Live, go ahead and put it there in the comments. If uh, and Tell us that you're here. Uh, give us anything that you think that, that we might like to, to know. If you have a prayer concern or anything like that, go ahead and post it in there. Uh, at this time, I invite you to get into a prayerful mood for our service. Go fight win. Amen.
this is going to be a communion service. So uh, later on in the service, if you want to, to do the Lord's Supper with us, I invite you right now to go ahead and get your elements ready. We will bless them. Get your juice, get your bread, get whatever you need uh, to be the body and blood and, and have it ready so when we get to that part that, that you can go ahead and participate. But let's at this time just go to our Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, we ask that you be with us enlighten us let this service be earth changing we ask these things in your son jesus name go fight win amen Let's join in our profession of faith this morning. Our profession of faith will be the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, and was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He rose from the dead, He ascended to heaven, and sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence shall come the judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. in silent prayer and reflection. We cry, cry out to you, O oh Lord. There are so many things that, that, that are placed in, as obstacles in front of us. There are so many hardships that we endure. Even in this land of America, this land uh, where we have almost all that we could ever want there are still times that we that it becomes almost 
overpowering. We ask that you give us strength, wisdom, and courage so that we can do the things that you ask of us to do, so that we can be uh, that, that, that city on a hill that Jesus talks about, so that we can be your hands and feet here on earth. Lord, we know that there are so many people in our world. We know that there are so many brothers and sisters in our midst that need to hear good news that need to hear the, the gospel of your son, Jesus Christ, and his, his birth, his life, his preaching and ministry, his death, and his resurrection. We ask that you continue to be with this congregation, be with this church as we go out throughout the world uh, and, and try to do just that. Try to be your mouthpiece here on earth. Lord, we lift up those that are hurting. We lift up those that are ill. We lift up those that are suffering from disaster, whether it be the chaos that is brought by man or, or the natural disasters uh, of storm and fire. We ask that you be with them as, as they go through the things and, and help them recover their world, help them recover their lives, because we know that you are with them. And we know that you love them and that you are there to give them strength as they as they do the things that are necessary to rebuild. Most of all, we ask that you continue to bless this congregation, bless all those that are worshiping today, and help us remember your son Jesus Christ and all that he did. Help us remember all that he said. Help us remember all that he taught. As we lift up that prayer in remembrance when he said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us, not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Stay be holy thine. May thy rich grace impart strength to my fainting heart, my zeal inspire as thou hast died for me. Shall o'er me roll Bless Savior then in love Fear and distrust remove Oh, bear me safe above 
Chip. Hey, Tater. What are you up to? What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> what? What are you up to? Are you implying that I am up to something? No. <laughs> I was just being polite. Polite? You accusing me of trying to overthrow the world in a violent uprising? <laughs> and that's being polite? <laughs> I never accused you of trying to overthrow the world in a violent uprising. Today. <laughs> What's got you all paranoid? I am not being paranoid. I just think people are out to get me. <laughs> Tater, that's exactly what paranoid means. Oh. Well, you know what they say. There's no pair like paranoid. <laughs> Who says that? The people love to get me. <laughs> Where are we going with this? I thought you knew. I was just playing along. <laughs> I guess we need a little faith. I guess we need better writing. Ooh. Sometimes that's the same thing. <laughs> okay. How are we supposed to strengthen our faith? Well, that sounds like a serious question. It is. How are we supposed to strengthen our faith? I suppose by exercising it. What? <laughs> That's the craziest thing I've ever heard! Today! And I've heard some pretty crazy stuff! <laughs> no, that's how we strengthen anything in life, by exercising it. Oh, okay. The power of Christ compels you! The power of Christ compels you! <laughs> Wrong exercising! <laughs> what other way is there? By literally practicing faith, by putting faith in our daily lives, by trusting that God is present and things will work out. Are you sure? Positive. Life can be stressful and full of challenges. All we really know is that God is with us, and if we have faith, things will work out. Just like we want them. Not always, but just like God uses them. Can't I just smack someone on the head? <laughs> so much more convenient. <laughs> no. Let's pray for guidance. Everyone bow your heads and repeat after me. Dear Lord, dear Lord, help us strengthen our faith. Help us strengthen our faith. Help us inspire others. Help us inspire others. But most of all, help us inspire ourselves. But most of all, help us inspire ourselves. We know you are always with us. We know you are always with us. And we rely on your strength. And we rely on your strength. Amen. Amen. And please smite those trying to get me. Amen. <laughs> <sighs> Say goodbye, Tater. What's that supposed to mean? <laughs> Is it about the violent overthrowing? Isn't it? Our scripture this morning comes from the book of Luke, the 17th chapter, verses 5 through 10. The apostle said to the Lord, Increase our faith. He replied, If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mulberry tree, Be uprooted and planted in the sea, and it will obey you. Suppose one of you has a servant plowing or looking after the sheep. Will he say to the servant when he comes in from the field, Come along now and sit down to eat? Won't he rather say, Prepare my supper, get yourself ready, and wait on me while I eat and drink? After that, you may eat and drink. Will he thank the servant because he did what he was told to do? So you also, when you have done everything you were told to do, should say, We are unworthy servants. We have only done our duty. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let's go to our Lord in prayer. 
Dear Lord, open up our hearts, open up our minds, and help us learn. We ask these things in your son, Jesus' name. Go, fire, win, amen. You know, we've looked at some rather difficult teachings of Jesus in the last few weeks. If you're just joining us today, I invite you to go and to the, the, to the the telecast of the last couple of weeks because we've we've looked at some some really uh, unique things. We looked at the dishonest manager uh, and the hero of that story, and and we looked at Lazarus and the rich man last week. And this week we look at faith and wanting more. You know, a little background. Jesus is preaching at his disciples. He isn't messing with the Pharisees or the others. These are his best followers. And he's on the road to Jerusalem. He knows his time is getting short. In other words, he is giving them the meat. He is giving them the things that they will need to sustain when he has gone. Now, the the disciples understand that they need more, right? After all, they're the chosen ones. And so what do they do? They ask for more faith. And Jesus goes off on this rant about seeds and trees, right? I I don't think I really understand him getting all wild on them. And and that's not true sarcasm, although sarcasm is my love language. But, you know, I don't always understand what he's talking about here. Was he being sarcastic? No. He was basically telling them that they already had enough faith to do whatever. He wasn't there to give them more. He wanted them to use it. Let's talk about faith for a second. Stepping out in belief when we don't have any physical evidence to show us, that's exactly what faith is. You know, we've made a very large cottage industry around faith, especially when it comes to such things as faith healing and and having faith, you know, cure our, our world. Let me say this right now. I do believe that the Spirit heals. Let me let me correct that. I know the Spirit heals. But I am skeptical that it happens wholesale at big preaching rallies. I have a big problem with that. And, and, and when people say that it's fake and it, and it hurts the faithful. And, you know, and don't get me started on the lack of faith that's caused by blank because you know that, that when people can't be, be uh, cured and they say, well, it's, it's, it's a lack of faith. That's horrible theology. It should be rebuked whenever possible. Today, Let's look at faith in a very Christ-like skill. What we're going to talk about is forgiveness. When was the last time you heard a forgiveness sermon? Well, neighbor, that's just too long. You know, I contend that real forgiveness takes faith. Real forgiveness takes a lot of faith. A lot of strength. And sometimes it's just not easy. But, you know, we don't forgive to be saved because we're already saved. You know, we forgive for something completely different. You know, we forgive so that we can show the world what Jesus has already done to us. You know, uh, Focus should not necessarily be on the grace given to to people that need uh, forgiveness because we all need that grace. It's about the faith of the forgiver. Would you ever be able to forgive forgive without faith? You know, I tell you, uh, there have been some times that, that I've been asked to forgive, and it's not always easy. Yeah, I was married once before. I've been married twice. Uh, I, I had practice, and this, one, this one's been the one that's been really good. But when my marriage fell apart, when my first marriage fell apart, and I was going like this is like on Father's Day, and, and Ben and Grider were less than one, and we were going to go eat somewhere, and, and my ex-wife uh, broke down, and she asked for my forgiveness because you know she had left, she had done all that. And 
I remember just thinking, I don't know if I can do this. You know, I've been hurt. I, I'm, I'm in a bad spot. And, and you're the hurt E. You know, you're the hurt er. I was the hurt E. But I was able to forgive, kind of, because she asked of it. But it still needed faith. It still, I had to have faith. I had to know that as I, that, that in that prayer, that we are forgiven as we forgive. Have you ever thought about that? That that same measure is how we, the forgiveness we show is the forgiveness we get. And here's another truth. Jesus says we have more faith than we would ever need. Just when we're born, we have that faith. But using it, however, takes practice, practice, and faith to make a step out when we see no physical evidence to prove that it's right. You know, Chip and Tater are right. It does take practice to show faith, right? Uh, was there physical proof the last time that, 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 you, uh, did, that, that you forgave something? Was there physical proof that it was right? Was there physical proof that it's when somebody forgave you? No, usually not. Usually it is something that just takes a place with two people. You know, it always amazes me when, when I see interviews of somebody that has caused real pain in someone's life. Like uh, when you see somebody that has, uh, has taken the life of a loved one of a person. And that person that took that life asked forgiveness. And the person whose, whose family member or loved one was taken from them does it, forgives, shows that forgives. You know, those of us that profess to follow Jesus have faith, and that's all it was. But, you know, here's the wonderful, really, really wonderful thing, and that's that forgiveness will touch many people when people in our world see us forgive it touches them i don't care if they're believers or unbelievers and jesus realized that jesus talked about being a stumbling block for those that are searching you know and i think that that hokey faith and that hokey healing and bad theology is a lot about lack of real faith and that is bad because guess what? Life can be very tough, even for those of us with lots of faith. So why do we have faith? And why do we use that faith to forgive? And we don't do it be, to be saved because I've already stated we're already saved. We do it just for that because we've already been saved. That's why we show faith. That's even though uh, we think we need more faith. Jesus and God has already given all the faith we need. So my advice to you today is let's start moving some trees. Go fight, win. Amen. Before we get started, this is the Lord's table. This is not the table of the United Methodist Church. Any and all are welcome. Uh, if you have your elements, if you have some juice, some bread, uh, we will bless this as we go through, through the liturgy. At this time, let us begin the, the service of the Lord's table. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him and who earnestly repent of their sin and to seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Merciful God. We confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart, that we have failed to be an obedient church, that we have not done your will, we have broken your law, we have rebelled against your love, we have not loved our neighbors, and we have not heard the cry of the need. Forgive us, we pray. Free us through joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, and that proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God 
Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection. You gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and by spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, and broke the bread, and gave to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, and gave to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, and Christ will come again. Pour out your spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the whole uh, body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to the entire world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. The body of Christ broken for you. Take and eat. The blood of Christ, the blood of the new covenant shed for you. Drink and remember. Amen. Go out into the world, showing the world God's love and God's grace, not just by the things that we say, but by the things that we do. Go fight, win. Amen. The power of Christ compels you. The power of Christ out. Tater? Oh, no. <laughs>
That concludes today's service here at St. Paul's United Methodist Church. If you're ever in the Lufkin area and you, you want to uh, worship with us, we worship at 11 a.m. on Sunday mornings here at 1505 South John Reddit Drive here in Lufkin, Texas. That's the intersection of Hank Street and the South Loop. Also, if you wish to give us an offering, we'll take it. And you can do so by, by sending it to P.O. Box 921, Lufkin, Texas, and the zip code is 75902. We look forward to spending time with you and, and to fellowshipping and being with you. But until that comes, go fight win. Amen.